Okay, so today we're going to be doing brushes. These are all your types that you apply the paint with. So you just take any of the brushes and they brush on the paint, back and forth motion. Kind of blend the two together. It's like um, I can put like later on I can put words in the middle and weather this up on the outside. If you've got a textured piece of wood, you just simply swirl this brush or any of these brushes, and it'll get in the grooves. If you like them, you can just leave them. Like I like the way that this looks here, so I'm just gonna leave that. So those are your regular paint brushes. You can also use some of the other brushes to paint on, depending on if you have smaller areas that you need to work on. And some of the longer handled, fluffier brushes can also be used to brush on, depending on the size surface that you're working on. But these, um, are about two inches across here. So that's gonna be one of your wider ones. And these are, this style, they're really lush and they cover well and um, they can hold a lot of paint. So if you're doing furniture, that's more ideal. Okay, so on to weathering brushes. As you can tell, this is sea glaze because it's already dry. To weather a piece, Dip it into my Vintage Secret here. And I'm dabbing off the excess in the other side of the tray. And I'm lightly grazing across. Same concept, dip off your excess. You can even use the middle piece to work off the extra, which is a great tip because a lot of people use way too much. And that gives you a good consistency amount to be able to do this technique.
this is a different style weathering brush and I'm just gonna show you real quick what you can do with this guy. You definitely need to do the excess trick here because you don't really need that much at all. See how much is still in there? So you see how much paint I just got off the brush? It's like almost naked, right? But it still gives you that feather weather coverage very softly. I can overlap the two here to kind of blend it a little bit. Same goes up here. You can do the same thing with this brush. We also have, this feather weather comes in a small, it comes in a large, and it even comes in a six inch sometimes if you can catch those on special. So you can do that to flat surfaces. This is how you get the name Weathering Brush. Because it does cool stuff like that. See how it um, benches it up a little bit? And so now we have 27 different shades coming soon that you can choose to do this technique with. And you just pick one that pairs well with what's underneath. So. Let's move on to the dust method, which is where you take barely any product. See how we have almost nothing in here now, which is perfect. And you just do the graze trick just to check it. Looks good. And you just lightly graze over the edges. You can even get in the crevices this way and it just lightly, lightly antiques it. So it's not as harsh, I guess. And you can even swirl to get like in the smaller areas. See how it slightly picks up the lines really soft. Start on the most raised areas first, and then work your way into the flatter areas. See how it's picking up the little ball thingamajigs, the carvings. You can work in circular motions. That's our dry glaze technique. You can do that with this brush or anything similar to it. Next, let's move on to staining, which is really fun because it doesn't smell like a stain and it doesn't take nearly as long to dry. It dries in seconds and it's an easy look and it's just way more simple than actual staining.
And if you add water or take a baby wipe to it afterwards, it lightens it. So either way, if you wanted to have less, you could. Or you can simply just wet this brush prior to applying. It just depends on how comfortable you are with the process. Let's see how easy. And this will be dry in like 90 seconds. If you want it darker, you put on a second coat. So I'll do one half with a dark coat and one half not. So you can see. Two coats, one coat, and using the stain method. These also, any of the rounded, thin brushes can be used for stain. So you've got this option, this option. This is also another good option. This brush here. Recommended wetting it first. But same concept, you just scrape across. And then for your blending tools. We have a few, but this is our newest. And we have one with a handle out now too, which is a little bit further grit. Um, to soften your work and the blend where you got too carried away. You can use these tools or you can use them to blend in your colors as well. Scott just softens it. So next we'll take the poly, the sealer, that seals it, it adds depth, brings out more of the richness of the pieces, and seals and protects your finish. And these come in various colors, but they're all shaped like this. See how it brings out the back, like the depth of it? In a pinch, you can even use any of these. Just make sure you rinse them well afterwards. Also, in addition to using this one as a stain brush, you can use it as a regular paintbrush for your smaller signs and smaller surfaces. This is our waxless wonder technique if you want to search that on our website. Uh, there's a, a blog entry on it. We're gonna let that set. These brushes can be used for our watercolor technique as well, but I think I'll do a separate video on that. But just so you can see, they're the blending brush and they do a great job of working into the piece and smoothing out. And when you get it a little bit wet with water, it does an amazing blend effect. But I'm gonna do an entire different video on that because you can do so many cool things with it. And it goes a little too further into depth. Um, take some anchor, I'm gonna blot off here. And this is the blending brush, so it's used to work to blend the two colors. So watch how simple and pretty this is. The 
like water almost. Take it and run it across it, like so. It's called the waxless wonder because it looks like you dark wax the piece and like it's weathered without all the work. And it's pretty much foolproof. Just one coat down, one coat on top, and then rub across. Perfectly weathered wood in like 60 seconds, two minutes, three minutes tops, something like that. All right, so we've got our staining brushes, your rounded tips like this, this one. These are also great to work with um, the watercolor and staining methods for blending. These are just your detail brushes to get in small spaces, like if you needed to get in here. And these are your weathering brushes, designed to give the various weathering looks, including your dry dust method, dry glazing, whichever one you wanna call it. And these are your regular paint brushes, these come in various colors. This is a multi-purpose brush. You can use it for staining, water coloring, and paint application. And this is a multi-purpose brush, but I'm a sucker for using it for just the poly brush. So either way, seal with this one, paint with these, and everything else, just play with them. I hope that makes sense, and I hope it clears up some stuff, because I know you guys are really curious about their whole method to our madness. Sorry it's so long. Talk to you guys later. Bye.